Here are some dark truths about female nature that women don't want men to know. But before we run down the list, please remember that this is the male space. We post material that empowers men, and therefore talking about these dark truths isn't intended to discourage men from dealing with women. We do, however, talk about female nature in order to help men understand women so they can make informed decisions and navigate the sexual marketplace with a bit of ease. With that being said, let's get to our first point, which is that women see male fidelity and kindness as expendable. In simpler terms, this means if a guy had money, good looks, and status, but wasn't loyal to one woman, an overwhelming number of women would pick him over a guy who was just loyal and kind, but didn't have money, good looks, and some status. This is especially true if the women in question are attractive simply because everyone is nice and kind to attractive women, and therefore they take this for granted, thus seeing no real value in it. And please don't get the wrong idea. This is not to say women don't want loyalty or completely deem it worthless, but what I am saying is that women overwhelmingly prioritize things like resources and good looks over loyalty. This paradigm is also the reason why men think women like jerks over nice guys. But the truth is that if a dude has good looks, money, and status but happens to be a jerk, women can be very forgiving of that man and would choose him over the loyal nice guy who does not have good looks, money, or status. Nice guys and simps will obviously get upset over this because, in their blue pill mind, a woman should care about loyalty just as much as a man. But these are evolutionary biological traits where women prioritize resources as a survival mechanism, while men seek the most mating opportunities. Another problem with nice guys and simps is that the most they have to offer is just loyalty instead of the tangible value required by women. If anyone as a man or even woman is struggling to understand this concept, then ask yourself why guys like Justin Waller, Andrew, and Tristan Tate exist. I mean, these are some of the many guys who date and sleep with multiple women who know of each other. And this doesn't happen only with famous people. We also hear women almost all the time on shows like Fresh and Fit, saying they would take a cheater with a lot of money over a loyal average or broke guy. We can also think about the gorgeous women we personally know who seem to always find a way back to their toxic cheating ex. Evolutionary psychologists have done a study on this phenomenon where they got a 100 men to rate the attractiveness of a group of women. The women who were rated as the most attractive by the majority of the men were the ones who participated in the research. And that strata of attractive women was asked a lot of questions in various different ways as to what they want in a romantic partner. The women, of course, said they wanted it all, from good looks to a lot of money. But what was surprising to the researchers is that one of the things women said they would be willing to forego if they had to was kindness and loyalty. Hopefully, this drives the point home. Both men and women will have to come to the realization that women do prioritize looks, money, and status over things like kindness or loyalty. And this has ironically made dating in the West polygamous. So now that we have identified this dark truth and why it exists, I would assume you already know that the best approach to this reality is for men to work on their appearance by going to the gym, looks max by going under the knife if that's what you want or need, dressing really nice, increasing your income, have a nice place to stay, and learn how to seduce women. Be pragmatic. Don't cope by saying dumb things like, if she doesn't want loyalty in a man, she probably isn't loyal herself. Always remember that being faithful is the woman's job, and the man's job is to provide and protect. Forget what women say, just watch what they do. Number two, she's hiding her past. Ever heard of the phrase, men are concerned with a woman's past, while women are concerned with a man's future? This basically means women are concerned with a man's competence and his ability to provide in the future. While men, on the other hand, are concerned with a woman's past sexual experiences, as it will be a good predictor of her ability to be faithful to him, thus ensuring the children she bears are his. This paradigm compels both men and women to lie about different things. Men will lie by overselling their competence, achievements, and overall success, while women will lie by overselling their purity and innocence. It is up to a woman to ensure that the man she's with is competent and a provider. Meanwhile, it is the man's job to ensure that the woman he is with is not a whore who will cheat on him and potentially have him raise another man's child and gentleman. She will lie. The darker her past, the deeper will her lies be. 
You see, contrary to what women may say about their past being insignificant, they are well aware that their past matters, hence they lie about their history of infidelity and their number of sexual partners. No girl is going to tell you that she is a cheat that has a sex partner count of triple digits and that she's had trains run through her. Men also need to be aware that with women being compelled and incentivized to hide the dark parts of their past, as a man you should know that there are no good girls, simply because the ones you think are good are the ones who have done well to hide their past. This is especially true if the women are from big cities like Miami, New York, or even London and Johannesburg, for those of you who are from outside of the U.S., and bad girls, on the other hand, are the women who are dumb enough to tell on themselves and reveal their promiscuous past. Anyways, off to the next point, which is that she's most likely an alpha widow. An alpha widow is a woman who holds a deep romantic attachment to a guy she was romantically involved with from her past. This is usually the guy she perceives as higher value than all of the men in her dating history. If you take time to consider the two previous dark truths in this video, then you should know that most women have dated and slept with a lot of men, and therefore the likelihood of you being the most desirable man they have dated or slept with drastically goes down. This essentially means you are not her first choice. Shout out to Chris Rock, by the way. Now, as a consequence of hypagamy, the guys that turn women into alpha widows are typically out of that particular woman's league and might just have been using her for sex. In some cases, the woman herself did something to mess up that relationship or interaction. Married men are the ones who should be concerned with settling for an alpha widow because women marry the second or third best option when the alpha they so desire doesn't want to commit. Those alphas themselves have very little reason to commit simply because they have a plethora of options. 80% of women want 20% of the men after all. The biggest problem with alpha widows in relationships is that they emasculate their current partner by covertly or overtly comparing them to their alpha ex. Sometimes the widows will not only compare their current boyfriend with their ex, but they will actively ignore the good he does and actively seek out the areas where the alpha ex eclipses the current boyfriend. If a woman keeps photos, gifts, letters, or even contacts of an ex and is always excited to talk about him, yeah, you might not be her first choice. Another sign that a man might be dealing with an alpha widow is when anything she has to do for you or with you is done with reluctance or seems like too big of a chore for her, and this sometimes includes sex. On the contrary, if your woman isn't harboring any romantic feelings for anyone, she typically will be excited to do things with and for you, she is even eager to have sex, and even initiates it. When you are a woman's first choice, she notices and appreciates the littlest of things you do for her. She will even celebrate the littlest of your achievements. The fourth and final dark truth is mate switching, also known as monkey branching. To be honest, I don't know what's worse between monkey branching itself or the fact that most men till this day aren't aware of it. They, men, think that women have a period where they stay single after a breakup. But little do they know that women rarely ever break up with men so they can be on their own. But before I go any further, let me explain the concept of monkey branching. Monkey branching is the act of pursuing and establishing a relationship with a newly found partner before leaving your current relationship. Although both men and women can monkey branch, monkey branching is almost exclusively a female trait. Women do this typically when they have found a guy who is a better option than their current partner. Monkey branching is essentially a form of infidelity, simply because at some point, the branching partner will be dating two people at once. In order for men to understand why women monkey branch, a few things need to be understood, and that is that women get bored in relationships way quicker than men. Men also have to remember that women have a biological clock, and that combined with the fact that they have a long list of needs and wants ranging from commitment, kids to a great lifestyle, it is easier to see why monkey branching is extremely prevalent amongst women. In an ideal world, well, at least according to men, Women are supposed to communicate their unhappiness in relationships to their partner and try to work things out instead of finding another partner, or have the integrity to break things off with their current man before going on to find the next. But what people who adhere to this form of naive idealism don't understand is that women would be working against their interests if they did this, thus leaving a huge incentive to monkey branch. 
Most women have an insane fear of being alone, and therefore thinking they are going to break up with you so they can be alone is somewhat naive and unrealistic. I mean, no one quits their current job before finding another one. We can all agree that mate switching is immoral and shouldn't happen. But as men, we don't and can't operate on what should, could, or would. We operate on what is, and what is, is that the potential risk of a woman leaving you for another man comes with the territory. So the best thing you can do as a man is to be her best option, and know the signs of a woman who is about to mate switch so you can act preemptively. This marks the end of the video, but before I go, know that the concepts discussed in this video and all videos across this channel are done so with the predication and understanding that nothing is absolute. And therefore, although most women might be the way we say they are, not all of them are like that.